Hello, welcome to Hedgehog Naval Academy. This is lesson four in our series. We're actually going to cover, I call it Seamanship 102. It's uh, not the very basics, which we already covered. These are some additional rules that are very helpful uh, to you that you might decide to use during uh, a game. We're going to cover firefighting. That you may want to use whether you intended to or not. Repairs, uh, a chance to kind of keep your ship in action a little bit longer. And then finally we're going to cover uh, how do you how do you handle leaving the table and going back on? Three very simple uh, things to deal with in the game, and we'll present the rules uh, separately. So let's take a look first at leaving the table. Okay. All right, there are going to be times, whether you intend to or not, uh, you'll be leaving the table edge, and that is not uh, does not destroy the ship in, in Black Seas. Uh, it does put a pause in your, your particular turn ship, but, you know, uh, I think it's a simple mechanic they've introduced here to keep the game playable without getting really, really fancy. Okay, so let's, here we have a frigate going battle sails. He had, let's just say, maybe he got in this position uh, not because he wanted to, but he was trying to avoid a collision. He had to move ahead, so he's, he's kind of stuck. Um, so you're going to activate normally. Now here, you'll notice as he completes the move, we're going to bring the full ship to five. Okay, there's the five for its rate of knots. And you will notice the ship has actually left the table. The hull has left the table, right? That's, if any part of the ship's hull leaves the table, it's considered to have left. So essentially what you do is you, find, you mark the point where the ship came in, you know, basically left, okay? You can use a die. Uh, I like to, so, to use the weight counter Typically, you just put it like this. But, you know, if there's a lot of ships in the area there's, that could potentially move in that space, what I might do then is instead I'll use a 10-sided die. And using the point, I'll mark where it left the table. Okay? And hopefully no, no one bumps that. Okay? So, when that happens, remove the ship and its weight counter from the table. Proceed to the next turn and go through all the activations as normal, ignoring the ship that is off the table for that one turn. The next turn, place the ship, its weight counter, with the you know the, the curve point there, right where it first entered or left the left the uh, table. Okay, and here now you want to at this point determine, you know, kind of pick where your your ship is going to, you know, what direction you want it to go, okay? So this way you can kind of line it up to get favorable advantage of the wind. And then you will place it, uh, the ship, on there at light sails, okay? So that's how it's going to look when it comes back in on the, the turn, basically two turns after it left the table. Now, Go in normal uh, activation order, and when you reach the ship, it can activate. You know, from this point, you can decide whether to go to anchor it or whether to go to battle sails, and then just continue with your move as normal. Okay, now it's important to remember this: the placement of this ship occurs at the very start of the turn. So, what that means is the opponents have a chance to. Because knowing where the ship is going to come on, they'll have one turn or maybe the remainder of even the turn it left the table to position their ships ready for a broadside or any firing to hit that particular ship. Because the ship will be there at the start of the next of the turn it comes in. It doesn't arrive during its activation point. It arrives the turn it comes in. So... Uh, you're hopefully this will be one of the first ships the wind hits but if not you may take a lot of fire before you actually get to activate so leaving the table isn't necessarily a sound strategy at times because you do not act you're going to be on the table long before you activate it potentially you might be the last ship to activate so just to, something to keep in mind all right so let's take a look now what happens when your ship is damaged and you need to do some repairs. All right, so here's my poor frigate. It's been beat up pretty bad. It's down to 15 hull. 
and my concern is, you know, I have a nerve or a nerve value of uh, 12. So if I take just four more damage, I'll immediately have to test the straight colors. And that's, if I'm a regular crew, it's a one-third chance of success. So I don't really want to be in that position. I need to do something about this. So to, if I have the opportunity, or even if I just feel it's worth the risk, I can decide to repair my ship. Now, what will happen is you will declare at the start of your phase whether you're going to repair or not, the very first decision you make. Because if you decide to repair, you cannot change the level of sail, change direction, or shoot that turn. Okay? You're spending, your, t your crew is focused on repairing the ship, getting it more seaworthy. Now, what you'll do now immediately is make your skill test, regular skill test, no modifiers. And if you're successful, you'll restore D6 damage. So that's, that's a huge change, potentially. But even if you fail, you'll at least restore one point. So even if I were to fail, moving it up one point, now I need five points before I need to make that t test. That's two heavy cannon and a light cannon. That's my odds of surviving are better unless, of course, I'm facing some heavier guns. Uh, so every little bit helps. So that's just, that's a, on a failed skill test. You at least get the one back. Uh, again, the disadvantage is you cannot take any other actions. You will complete your move. So here he's at battle sails. He'll complete his move and go forward essentially twice, five. You know. So let's just kind of play that out here. And we'll kind of move. So he's going to start here. Oh, let's go, we'll put his... We'll put the card where he was, and he's going to go ahead and there's his first move. Because I've repaired, then I had to do it again, and now I'm over here. Okay, I can't take evasive action. If that happens to put me in broadside of an enemy ship, so be it. If it makes it easier for another ship to get a raking shot on me, so be it. It's a chance I may have to take just to get the chance of making it harder for me to uh, of surrender. Okay, so that's what is repairing ship is really, really simple. Often you'll really, really want to do this if you've actually been set on fire. So let's take a look at a ship set on fire. All right, so here's my poor frigate set on fire yet again. This happens quite a bit, <laughs> a little more often than I'd like it. There are two ways to get set on fire. Uh, right now, the easiest way is to get a critical hit on the hull table. That's number six. will roll the d6. Uh, six will get you lit on fire. Uh, the other one is to roll a ten when you're firing a hot shot, red hot shot at someone. Either way, your ship starts is set on fire and immediately takes damage based on its size. Okay, so you mark it with the cotton wool like this, uh, at least if you've got some, or you mark it with some something suitable. And now at the start of the activation, your crew is going to have to try to uh, put it out. You don't have a choice about the roll. You have to try to put the fire out. However, you have a couple choices to make. Uh, you are going to put the fire out. Uh, you, you're going to make a roll to put the fire out, and that's going to be a skill test. But you can decide to focus on putting the fire out and give yourself a plus two modifier to that skill test. But if you do that... You can't change direction, change the level of sail, or uh, shoot in the activation. Now, why would you want to do that? Well, it's simple. You have a normal skill test to try to put the fire out on a D6. Uh, if you're successful, fire is put out, you avoid damage. If you roll a 1, your ship explodes. No chance to save it. It's, it blows up. Reaches the powder <coughs> kegs of the 100 below, and boom. And every ship within four inches suffers D10 damage from it. Uh, I kind of wish it would also put those ships on fire, but still, it, it, it's catastrophic and your ship is gone. That's why you want to potentially give yourself that plus two, because if you focus on putting the fire out and give yourself that plus two and forego shooting or changing your, doing a maneuver or changing sails, you will not blow up on a one. Even if you're all one and fail your skill test, you don't blow up. 
you simply take damage. Okay, so again, if you fail your test and you do not uh, put the fire out, you just take your normal damage based on the size of the ship. Again, it's uh, D3 damage if it's tiny or small, D6 if it's a medium, and D10 if it's a large or extra large ship. So, honestly, you probably, depending on how well, how well you feel like, like you roll normally, you might want to just go ahead and give yourself that extra edge to put the fire out right away. Um, I've made the mistake a couple times of not focusing and getting that plus two, and I end up taking more damage from fire than from actually being hit by cannon. Uh, and that, you know, that can quickly, when you only have 36 points on a frigate, you know, it doesn't take long for that to accumulate and get you down to one salve away from having to strike your color. So, uh, it's a tactical choice you'll have to make, but it might be worth it to try to put that fire out for sure. Okay. So it's simple uh, mechanism, and you're good to go get rid of the uh, fire just by passing a skill test. Okay. All right. So those are three rules kind of I wanted to cover today. Uh, just kind of keep them simple, keep these uh, little lesson videos uh, short and sweet. And that way, as the uh, naval exercises continue, you'll, start, you'll be able to pick these uh, rules up more easily if they happen to come up during those scenarios. All right, so hope you enjoyed this video. Hope it was helpful and instructional. Please go ahead and share, like, subscribe, and we'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.